In this presentation, I want to cover the turf infesting caterpillars that commonly attack managed turf grass in the Middle Eastern countries. I'm assuming that you already know that caterpillars are the larvae of various moths and butterflies. The major large caterpillars that use grasses as foods are the armyworms and cutworms. Armyworms have an interesting habit of being gregarious. That is, they are most comfortable when the caterpillars are feeding in mass side by side. This is why they are called armyworms, as they feed as an army of worms eating their way through the turf or various field crops, especially maize or corn and other small grain crops. The most common armyworms are in the genus Spadoptera, and about 30 species in this genus are known pests around the world. In the Middle Eastern countries, the African armyworm is the most commonly encountered pest, but the fall armyworm and the lawn armyworm are also occasional turfgrass pests. Cutworms are large caterpillars that tend to feed as individuals. In fact, larger cutworms will often eat a smaller cutworm if they encounter each other. The black cutworm has been distributed around the world and is a common vegetable pest as well as a pest of turf grasses. Other species of cutworms can occasionally cause problems in turf grass. Armyworms in the genus Spadoptera are tropical to semi-tropical species. This means that they can't survive freezing temperatures. All armyworms have striped bodies. Virtually all the Spadoptera armyworms have a distinctive inverted white Y-shaped mark on the head capsule. These images are of some African armyworms recovered after using a detergent flush on some Dubai golf course turf. This species can vary considerably in color, but the somewhat striped bodies with the darker paired triangle marks down the back are diagnostic. During cooler weather, they may be dark brown, but green and light brown are more common colors seen in warmer weather. The fall armyworm is usually brown to nearly black in color with distinctive stripes down the body. You can see the inverted Y-shaped mark on the head in this image in the middle. Spadoptera adults are medium-sized moths with mottled patches of brown, white, and black scales. Each species of Spadoptera moths can be identified by the patterns formed by the color patches. Spadoptera armyworm females are adept at laying eggs in masses on plant leaves or permanent structures that overhang turf. Each female can lay 500 to 2,000 eggs in a mass. Upon hatching, the larvae drop to the ground and feed together or gregariously. However, when there are lower populations, the larger larvae can behave much like black cutworms by making pockmarks on greens. When young, armyworm larvae can cause a general thinning of the turf, which can be mistaken for drought or heat stress, or possibly lack of fertility or even a foliar disease. Turf managers should never assume that thinning is just from lack of fertilization or irrigation. Take a close look to ensure that something else is not going on. It's pretty easy to discover armyworm larvae when they are abundant. Simply spread the turf canopy and look in the thatch zone for the caterpillars or their frass pellets. Better yet, use a detergent flush to force the caterpillars out of the turf. Turf managers, especially on golf courses, need to be aware that Spadoptera armyworms will lay many masses of eggs on structures that overhang the turf. This can be tree or shrub leaves, greens flags, cart path cables, ball washing stands, and even the siding of buildings that have turf up to their sides. It's a great practice to train the greens mowing crew to inspect the flags and markers for egg masses before they mow. Simply crush the egg masses with your fingers and you will have eliminated hundreds, possibly even thousands of potential pests. African fall and lawn army worms relish dining on turf that has been recently sprigged, seeded, or sodded, especially when areas have been heavily fertilized. 
We now suspect that the adult female moths have the ability to sample the gutation water produced by turf in order to assess its nutrient value. Turf managers should be especially diligent at monitoring areas that are being renovated for signs of armyworm activity. Such areas can also be treated with a caterpillar preventive insecticide like acelaprin. I want to suggest that you may also want to consider using pheromone traps to monitor armyworm adult flights. The most common traps are made of plastic coated cardboard and the inside of the trap is coated with a sticky material. To operate these traps, you purchase the pheromone capsules of the species of armyworm you need to monitor. There are different pheromones for each moth species. So a couple of traps, each with a different pheromone, may be needed. Simply toss one of the pheromone capsules into the trap and hang it in a shaded location. Check the trap every few days. When you suddenly get a bunch of the moths in the trap, you will know that there is a flight underway. The adults will lay eggs and you will likely see the small larvae about three weeks after the initial flight. Larger larvae will likely produce visible damage about 30 to 50 days after this flight. We'll cover specifics of recommended caterpillar insecticides at the end of this presentation, but I wanted to provide you with some management tips specific to armyworms here. Because armyworms can lay so many eggs at one time, their damage can suddenly occur. So, the turf manager needs to train the maintenance staff to look for early signs of armyworm feeding. This will look like thinning or yellowing turf. The greens mowing crew should be trained to inspect hole markers and flags for any armyworm egg masses. If masses are found, simply crush them. Detergent flushes and pheromone traps are also very useful in monitoring armyworm activity. Armyworms are attracted to turf being maintained with high fertility rates. Most professional turf managers are now able to cut back on using periodic high rates of nitrogen fertilizers. Using slow-release fertilizers or using the liquid spoon feeding techniques can greatly even out the turf grass growth and reduce heavy rates of nitrogen fertilizers. Where turf grass is being established or renovated, especially by sprigging, Preventive caterpillar controls may be warranted because new establishment often needs higher fertility applications. In order to prevent movement of armyworms or cutworms onto greens and teas from a surrounding turf, it is often recommended to spray one to two boom widths of that surrounding turf that surrounds the greens and teas. This can be especially useful if using one of the long residual insecticides. Black cutworm larvae are generally dark gray to black, often with a dark greenish cast. They often have a single broad lighter colored stripe down the back. The head capsule is a mottled brown color, but another diagnostic feature is the fine cobblestone pattern seen on the exoskeleton. This cobblestone pattern can barely be seen with a hand lens. The adult moths tend to hide in the grasses or shrubs during the day, but they may come out at night to feed on nectar from the flowers of weeds, trees, or cultivated flowers. The adults are generally shades of gray with overtones of brown. When the wings are folded, the basal area appears dark and the tips of the wings have a band of lighter color. Each wing has a black dagger-shaped mark, which gives them another common name, the dart moth. The black cutworm and all the armyworms have a complete life cycle with eggs, larval, pupal, and adult stages. The males usually undergo five larval instars while the females undergo six. Apparently the females undergo the sixth instar to be larger so that they can produce more eggs. Remember our target is the larva and controlling smaller instar larvae will help prevent turf loss. In this illustration, you can clearly see the lighter wing tips of the adult moth and the diagnostic black dart mark on the wings. Because of their more solitary behavior, 
Cutworm damage in high-cut turf is rarely evident. However, their feeding in short-cut turf, especially of putting greens and teas, results in what are called pock marks. These are definite depressions in the turf surface. The pock marks can be circular or in irregular lines. Even the short turf of tennis lawns and croquet courts can show cutworm feeding damage. These pock marks can interfere with ball roll, so they are not tolerated on golf course greens. Small cutworms merely hide in the thatch during the day, but larger cutworms often form burrows that extend into the soil. They will feed at night by extending their bodies from the burrows. We now know that larger cutworm larvae usually remain in a single burrow for three to six days before moving to a new location to feed. When treating with insecticides, cutworm larvae often come to the surface to die. Apparently, black cutworms behave differently in turf than they do in field crops. In turf, cutworm females attach single eggs to the tips of grass plants at night. Now, if this is on a green, what's going to happen the next morning? That's right, this will be mowed off. Research has shown that the cutworm eggs are indeed removed and they end up in the greens mower baskets. Unfortunately, many mowing crews are instructed to simply dump the clippings under a nearby tree or shrub. In short, they're creating a little cutworm nursery. When cutworms are known to be active, the greens clippings should be composted or disposed of well away from the greens. We also know that the adult moths are attracted to flowers at night where they pick up nectar. Having flowers surrounding your greens and teas is just asking for cutworm damage. First and second instar black cutworm larvae build small webbed shelters in the V channel of turf leaf blades. They skeletonize the leaf surfaces within this protection. When they become third in stars, the larvae drop to the ground and begin their habit of constructing protective burrows into the thatch and soil. They emerge from these burrows, generally at night, to feed on the turf foliage. By the fourth in star, the larvae become cannibalistic, with larger larvae regularly killing and eating any smaller caterpillars they encounter. The larger larvae also tend to move and reestablish new burrows every few nights. The larger larvae can easily crawl 15 to 20 meters in a night to establish burrows in new areas. This is why we recommend treating the turf surrounding infested greens and teas with one to two boom widths of the sprayer. This will prevent rapid reinfestation of the treated greens and teas. Our next group of caterpillars are generally smaller and usually not much of importance in higher cut turf. However, in shortcut turf, they can be important primarily due to birds searching for the small larvae. The sod webworms are very small caterpillars that have two adult forms. The classic sod webworms roll their wings around their bodies and they have distinctive snout-like mouth parts that project forward from the heads. The tropical sod webworms also have small larvae but the adult moths hold their wings flat like a jet airplane's wings. A distinctive feature of all sod webworm larvae is the presence of rows of darker spots visible on the body. Burrowing webworms are rarely noticed as their solitary larvae build silken lined burrows into the soil, and the larvae feed slowly on grass foliage surrounding those burrow openings. Also, few people realize that a whole group of butterflies, the skippers, have larvae that usually feed on grasses. Again, these are occasionally noticed on medium cut turf. The larvae have large head capsules with an obvious constriction visible behind the head. They have bodies covered with velvet-like hairs. The typical crambid type sod webworms have adults that roll their wings around the body when at rest. Supposedly, this allows them to look like dead, rolled up pieces of grass foliage. The tropical sod webworms have adults that hold their wings flat and out to the side in a triangular shape. Both groups have small larvae that are generally light tan in color or greenish if they have been actively feeding on grass blades. 
These larvae are covered with rows of dark spots. In higher cut turf, sod webworm larvae usually build a burrow in the thatch layer and they line this with loose strands of silk. The larvae emerge at night to feed on grass blades, then hide during the daytime. They often fill their burrow with green frass pellets. In shortcut turf, the sod webworm larvae usually dig deeper into the underlying soil. They extend their heads from these burrows at night and feed in the shortcut turf grass leaves just below the mowing level. Sod webworm damage on shortcut turf usually appears as small irregular streaks or patches on the surface. This doesn't interfere with ball roll, but the spots are easily identified by birds. Foraging birds have often learned that there is likely a tasty caterpillar on one end or the other of the brown mark, and the birds will often persist at digging out these spots. This digging can cause extensive damage to the green surface, so bird feeding activity on golf greens and tees should suggest that a detergent flush should be applied to determine if sod webworm larvae are present. Sod webworms have the same kind of complete life cycle as other caterpillar pests. The tiny first and second instar larvae usually feed on grass blades, often within a tiny silken shelter. They then drop to the ground to begin construction of their silk lined burrows. Sod webworms in semi-tropical zones usually have continuous generations that take 40 to 60 days to complete. There are many species of skipper butterflies that have larvae that feed on grasses and sedges. These rarely occur in great abundance in turf, but the larvae can occasionally be found making pock marks in shorter cut turf. The larvae may also be found when looking for other turf infesting caterpillars. The adults are thick bodied butterflies that are strong flyers. The larvae are usually brown, gray, or greenish in color, and the body is typically covered with fine hairs. This can give them a velvety look. The most distinctive feature of these caterpillars is the obvious constriction of the thorax just behind the head. Skipper larvae rarely cause sufficient damage that would need controls. Large cutworms and armyworms will quickly surface when exposed to a detergent solution. However, the small sod webworms often take 15 to 20 minutes to emerge from their silk lined burrows to try and dry off the irritating detergent solution. If you are having difficulty finding caterpillars in turf, use the two tablespoons of dishwashing detergent in two gallons of water flushing trick. In really warm weather, even cutworms and armyworms may be hiding deep in the thatch. So a disclosing flush may help determine their presence and their numbers. In the past, almost all the insecticides provided good control of caterpillars. However, when the neonicotinoids replaced most of the organochlorine, organophosphate, and carbamate insecticides, we were left with the pyrethroids. Pyrethroids remain our primary insecticide tool used to quickly knock down caterpillar populations. There are many pyrethroids still on the market, but bifenthrin is one of the most commonly used. Unfortunately, even if applied as granules, most pyrethroids remain active for only about two to three weeks. We still have one carbamate available in many countries, carboreal or seven. Some countries also allow the use of chlorpyrifos, which is a traditional organophosphate. With the recent development of the anthernilate diamides, often just called diamides, we again have a group of insecticides that have strong caterpillar activity. The first one on the market, chlorantranilaprol or acelaprin, seems to have exceptional caterpillar controllability and a single application can remain active for months. Cyantronilaprol has much shorter residual activity, but tetranilaprol has a, at least a two-month residual activity. In general, the neonicotinoids are great for white grubs, billbugs, and ants, but they have poor activity against caterpillars. 
The only exception to this is clothionidin or arena insecticide. I noted that some of you have asked for biological or bio-based white grub controls, and there were few products available. For caterpillar control, the story is quite different. Many of you are likely familiar with the mosquito larval control pellets that you put into ponds and other water retention areas to control mosquito larvae. These are based on a Bacillus thuringiensis strain that can kill fly larvae. There are other strains of this bacterium, generally just called BTs, that are good for control of caterpillars. Strains that contain the Kerstaki or Aawazi strains are generally very good for control of Spadoptera armyworms and sod webworm larvae. However, black cutworm larvae seem to have little reaction to these strains. Most BTs are pretty susceptible to UV degradation, so applying in the evening or at night is recommended. Azadiractins are a group of botanical insecticides extracted from neem tree seeds. Again, sprays of azadiractins have short residual activity, probably no more than a couple of days. Also, if you decide to use azadiractins, be sure to purchase products that state the percentage of azadiractin on the label. Neem oil is just that, the oil extracted from neem seed, which has virtually no activity against turfgrass caterpillars. Finally, Another set of toxins that are extracted from a soil-dwelling microbe are the spinosins. Spinosad has good caterpillar activity, but it also has short residual ability, and repeat applications may be needed if you're trying to control large caterpillars. There are several approaches that golf course and sport field managers can use to control turf-infesting caterpillars. The simplest is to treat turf when and where the caterpillars are detected. Pyrethroids are the primary insecticides used for this approach. A better approach, especially for protecting golf course greens and tees, is to apply a soloprin at the moderate to high rates, especially to the greens and tees. Be sure to also treat one to two boom widths around the greens and tee surfaces so as to eliminate any armyworms or cutworms that could crawl back onto the green or tea surfaces at night. Higher cut turf can be treated as needed with less expensive pyrethroids. For turf managers with big budgets, using a celeprin wall to wall can certainly eliminate caterpillar issues for several months and such a treatment can also help eliminate billbug and white grub issues. Before we end, let me also discuss some other important issues. First, what do turf infesting caterpillars eat? Well, the general answer is grass leaf blades. So, if you want rapid control, your insecticide needs to be on or in leaf blades. Most of the turf infesting caterpillars feed at dusk, during the night, and early in the morning. This is why sprays always work faster and often better than granules for turf caterpillar control. Also, consider caterpillar treatments to be like your fungicide treatments. You want the maximum residues on or in the leaves that the caterpillars are going to eat. Therefore, most caterpillar sprays should not be irrigated in after the application. Only apply an irrigation if the label requires it or if you're using a granule that needs to be activated by that irrigation. Well, this ends our Caterpillar presentation. If you need to contact me about insect or mite problems, feel free to send me an email message at the shuttler.1 at osu.edu address. I also use the WhatsApp phone application, especially for international text and face-to-face -face discussions.